More and more colleges and universities are getting rid of standardized testing because many of our friends on the left consider it to be racist because we find consistently that whites and Asians score higher than Hispanics and blacks. And instead of holding Hispanics and blacks to the same standard, we must lower the bar by completely doing away with standardized testing because having the best man for the job isn't actually a strength. Diversity is a strength, and in fact, it's our greatest strength. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. This could be it for us. This could be one of the last videos that you see from me on YouTube.com because, as some of you know, they're updating their policies. And so as of December 10th, 2019, YouTube will terminate your account if it believes in its sole discretion that your channel is not, quote, commercially viable, which means that if your channel isn't making them enough money, they can just delete it. And since they demonetize almost everything that this channel posts, technically it wouldn't be considered commercially viable. It's almost as if they plan this, but whatever. I can't help but laugh at it because it's like, first of all, this channel is barely commercially viable for me, but I still make it work. But if and when that happens, you're gonna wanna go to heckoffcommy.com. Might wanna go there now, sign up for the newsletter just in case they delete the channel and you forget about me. Also, if you'd like to hear my uh, impassioned and uncensored thoughts about YouTube, that's gonna be going up on the website very soon because I just don't think it's a good idea to post here. Plus, if you sign up, you could win an epic Christmas sweater. Patrick, I'm talking to you. Matt, Eric, talking to you. You guys are epic, but it could very well be the only way that we can stay in touch. I hope not. Still have Twitter, stuff like that for now, but it could be, but anyways, Figured if we're going, <laughs> I figured if we're going out, we may as well go out talking about racial differences and SAT scores. So here we go. But first, I want to talk about why I really like the SAT, why the SAT is good. Then we'll talk about why they say it's bad, how it's racist, all that fun stuff. We'll debunk it. So everyone watching this is probably taking the SAT. Maybe they will in the future. Maybe you've taken the ACT, but I'm absolutely in love with the SAT. And the reason that I'm in love with the SAT is because I did very well on it because I have a high IQ. I got big brain, 97th percentile, perfect essay score, 24 out of 24. And I don't think that being intelligent means that you're better than someone else or that you have more value than someone else. But you have to understand, I was kind of like pushed into a corner because I'm sitting in these classes with the boys. We're making memes, just minding our own business. And then for years, we're just getting the eye rolls. We're, everyone's calling us stupid. Everyone's calling us immature. And then it's time to actually find out who's got the biggest brain. And they're a bit unhappy to find out that John Doyle, who they laughed at and called a Nazi for being to the right of Hillary Clinton, is actually smarter than them. So this was fun for me because here's what happens. You've got these kids and they're really good at the system of school. They're really good at showing up to class on time, taking notes, retaining the information for the tests, and then forgetting about it. Then they take a test that actually measures their intelligence and they do poorly. These are the kids who, uh, you know, they have a problem with standardized testing because they're so used to being told that they are exceptional because they can maintain a high grade point average, but then in an actual test of intelligence, they come up short. And so they think to themselves, well, I didn't do well on this test, so there must be something wrong with the test because I'm brilliant, so this just doesn't add up. And it's very funny to me. And truly brilliant people tend to have very high grade point averages and high test scores, so don't think that I don't acknowledge that. But the kids who get really good grades and then they develop an ego about it and then they bond the SAT, I love those kids so much. Like, they're just so convinced that they're these geniuses, but you talk to them and their personality is basically rooted in four things, which would be an enjoyment of being around people, an enjoyment of watching things on screens, an enjoyment of consuming specific foods and drinks, uh, namely types of coffee or alcohol, and also an enjoyment of animals, namely dogs and cats. But you'll get a hamster or a guinea pig in there sometimes. And these are the types of people who look down upon my people. The young guys, the high energy, we're restless, we want to create chaos, we, we're, we have convictions, we're sharp. We maintain to this day that we would have done better on the math section if we had paid attention in class, but it is okay. And what do they do? They diagnose us with ADHD. They tell us that our behavior is defective. It's fundamentally a difference a conflict between masculine and feminine within education. And feminine is winning, but you know we, we could talk about that for hours. Um, the purpose of the SAT fundamentally is to predict college success, right? Like that's why it exists, that's why we take it. Now, obviously there are a lot of factors that the SAT can't necessarily account for, things like your motivation, your discipline, your general personality, if you will, stuff like that. But uh, that being said, it does a pretty good job. There was a large scale meta-analysis done by the University of Minnesota, and that found that a student's SAT score is just as good a predictor of their freshman year GPA as it is of their general college GPA. And research from Vanderbilt has shown that the SAT 
is also a predictor of many life outcomes long after college. And the reason for that is that the SAT is an intelligence test. And they'll tell you that it's not. They'll tell you that you can study for it just like you'd study for a spelling test. And that's just not true. There's a very high correlation between SAT scores and IQ scores. And both of these remain relatively stable uh, over time. And they can't really be increased through training or practicing. And research has shown that the SAT classes, the coaching, all that stuff, that only increases your score by about 20 points, which is still noteworthy, but not significant enough to conclusively settle the debate and say that intelligence can be modified or even well if it can't be modified then how is it fair to make decisions that profoundly affect their lives based on something that they can't control and I'll tell you why it's fair I don't want intellectual diversity at our top colleges and universities and I don't mean like diversity of thought or whatever I mean like I literally do not want intellectual diversity I don't want a mixture of very intelligent people and very unintelligent people just for the sake of inclusion why do you deserve to go to college why do you deserve to take the place of someone smarter than you you know, if we're training the next generation of doctors, I don't care what your extracurriculars were in high school. Like, you know, I, I want the smartest guys possible filling up those places. And if that's not you, I really couldn't care less. Maybe you can tell that to a white liberal on the operating table because it turns out eating your period blood three days a week is not actually a good idea. Just tell them your MCAT score sucked, but it's okay because you were the president of the Gender Sexuality Alliance and they'll probably be okay with it. But seriously, it's not like, you know, we're excluding you from a party or something like it's nothing personal against you. I just happen to believe that the smartest people should be put in the positions that require the smartest people. And if that makes you uncomfortable, that's too bad. You know, back to the preparation or the coaching, this, this stuff. If you look at who's publishing the articles claiming that you can practice and increase your score, stuff like that, almost all of them are selling their own prep course. So they have a financial incentive to pretend that you can increase your score by practicing. And if you buy their course, all they do is teach you a bunch of strategies like, uh, if you know an answer is wrong, cross it out. That way, when you select an answer, you won't pick the one that you know is wrong. It's like, bro, I paid $500 for this. The best way to practice for the SAT is to practice algebra and reading comprehension. But again, this isn't going to work for people that are not smart enough to do algebra proficiently or to look at sets of text and find answers proficiently. I mean, the only real improvement that can be made is going to come from people that are smart enough to do those things, but just haven't learned them yet for whatever reason, probably, you know, playing pocket edition in class or something. And these are always the criticisms. They claim, well, it's not fair because you can practice for it. It's like, yeah, but that doesn't mean that you're going to see improvements. You can practice for anything. You practice flying. But if you don't have the capacity to independently achieve human flight, like you're not going to improve. Or, oh, intelligence tests have been used to claim racial superiority in the past. Therefore, they're bad. It's like, yeah, you know, this is the same thinking that brought you. Guns have been used in bad ways before. Therefore, all guns are bad. Never mind that both guns and intelligence tests are groundbreaking and extremely useful human inventions. Or they'll say something like, human beings shouldn't be reduced to a test score. Why not? Should we not reduce the vast experience that is human life to a number like we do with age? We are trying to objectively quantify your performance on a scale which we can then use to compare you to other students. Like, what's wrong with that? That it doesn't take into account that you were in choir in high school? Like, again, that's great, but it doesn't mean that you deserve to take the place of someone who is much more likely to fare better than you. Or they'll say, well, it's not fair because kids who grow up in wealthy families tend to do better, and that's just not fair. It's like, why is this surprising? Like, really, like, why do you think that there's a correlation between familial wealth and SAT scores? It's not because they're buying the prep courses. Or maybe they are, but it's not because they're working. It's because there is a strong correlation between IQ and future income. And we know that IQ is largely genetic. So, of course, there's a link between the wealth of the family and the kid's test score. And that link is that both are caused by the genetic IQ or general intelligence. So, again, that criticism isn't a criticism of the SAT. It's a criticism of the idea of intelligence, practically speaking, which isn't really something that they even try to hide anymore. But still, you know, we have to call it what it is. But the problem with phasing out standardized tests because of these criticisms is that it could actually backfire on them. Like, for example, let's say we get rid of standardized testing to focus more on a student's grade point average, uh, their extracurricular makeup. So we're not defining them as much by numbers anymore. We're virtuous. We're getting an idea as to who they really are hypothetically. So now you've got much more attention being paid to extracurricular involvement. But it's like, okay, what does that mean? It means that now, in order to stand out on a college application, you're going to have to be able to afford being involved in extracurricular activities, which is going to negatively affect low-income families who were theoretically supposed to be looking out for in the first place. Same thing with grade point average. There's a phenomenon called grade inflation, and basically what's been happening is over the past few decades, the average GPA in this country has been increasing despite no real academic improvement. And guess who's been doing it? That's right, 
It's the wealthy schools. And why is that? Okay, well, they want to maintain their elite wealthy status. They want to keep the money coming in, so they inflate grades. And it's not just that the kids are scoring higher. Uh, there's strong evidence that they're deliberately inflating their scores. And so what's the result of this? Well, we're increasing the focus on grade point average. The rich kids have the highest grade point averages. Now, yet again, you're harming the people who you claim to want to help, the less well off. And all of this is stemmed from this narrative that we're currently dealing with that doesn't believe in inequality of outcome, that doesn't believe in hierarchy. And because of that, they look at the average SAT scores by race and they come to the conclusion that the fault is not with the students, it's with the test. It's with the whole system. They say that the SAT is racist against minorities, not Asians, only the minorities that we care about. And because of that, we have to change or eliminate the SAT. And so now they're talking about an adversity score, which means that they're going to decide how hard they think your life has been and then score you on that, which will then impact your final score. So if you're a minority, your neighborhood wasn't that great, do not worry. Even if your score sucked because you're not good at algebra, you're bad at essay writing and reading comprehension, they're going to subjectively decide that you're actually just as qualified as these other kids. And there's something to note um, about these tests being biased against minorities uh, because a lot of times we hear this word bias and we're scared of it, which is just kind of silly because bias literally just means something is favored. Sometimes it's unjust, but it doesn't have to be. So for example, if you ask me who won the Red Wings game the other day and I say the Islanders, that's a true answer, but it's also a biased answer. And someone else might tell you that the Red Wings actually won. Um, they're also giving you a biased answer because it's favoring the Red Wings over the Islanders. And that answer also happens to be incorrect. So there's nothing inherently wrong with bias. And here's where it's really important. Anything that is not perfectly equal in outcome is by definition biased because all biased means is that something was favored. So if you and I are racing 100 meters and you win, you were clearly favored in the competition because you were faster than I was. So it's biased. That being said, it's not unfair just because it's biased. It's not unfair to me that you're faster than I am, which you're probably not, by the way, because Doyle, you're the fastest white kid on the team. That was my, my track coach in high school. Uh, but seriously, according to the left, all bias is inherently unfair. And because of this, in their eyes, the only way to ensure true fairness is to ensure equality of outcome. And you can't have equality of opportunity if you're going to have equality of outcome because human beings are different. And those differences produce different outcomes. And because of that, I truly believe that the best hope for intelligent, capable people who happen to be in poor circumstances is the SAT. I truly believe that. Because you've got high schools inflating grades, giving out the position of valedictorian like to dozens of kids, even hundreds I've heard. You know, kids that aren't even like capable of doing like surface level mathematics. So because of that, it's very important to preserve the integrity of one kid, one test in a pure, unbiased in the sense that everyone has an equal opportunity, just pure assessment of that kid's potential on an objective scale. Anything other than that is only going to hurt the people who you're supposedly trying to protect and also unfairly discriminate against people who don't need the bar lowered for them to succeed, which is wrong in every conceivable way. And it's un-American, frankly. Hey guys, if you like this video, Give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'm kinda not feeling too good. Kinda have a cold or something. I don't know if you can tell. Still try to be high energy. Maybe it's, I'm not gonna say that. Okay, thank you so much for, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. And may God bless America. Ka-chow.